A few years ago, I met my best friend Sam at the Rock Shop Academy, a place where kids under 18 go to learn how to perform music. <laughs> this is an action shot of us playing on stage at Rock Shop, one of our benefits. And so there, we bonded. And our friendship grew through the medium of music. We talked about plans for future projects, gear that we wanted to buy, favorite bands, stuff like that. But sadly, Sam was sick. He had a heart condition. And in September of 2014, he passed away. And when this happened, music was how I and all of our friends coped with the loss. He was such an amazing young man, and his loss is really tragic. But what came with it wasn't. As soon as he was diagnosed, a community of friends and family came around him from Rock Shop to support him from everything. This became Team Samo. They raised money for him through donations and a benefit concert in his honor. And it was truly amazing for me to see how many people bonded by music use music to support someone in need. And just like this, this is one of the many ways that music interacts with our lives. So another way is that music interacts with our brains. It changes the structure and the chemistry. So as you can see, what it does is it lowers cortisol whenever you listen to music. And cortisol is the stress hormone. So when you listen to music, you're a lot less stressed out. It also increases levels of neurotransmitter dopamine which is the pleasure chemical. That's like what you get when you eat chocolate or if you have runner's high, it makes you happy. It also increases levels of oxytocin and that is the love chemical, which <laughs> it helps us bond and trust others. It's been shown that musicians have more symmetrical brains with increased motor control, auditory processing, and spatial coordination. They even have a larger corpus callosum, which is a band of nerve fibers connecting both hemispheres of the brain. So they have more connection between the brain. It's been proven that music education leads to a higher IQ, <laughs> as well as improved language development. And schools with music edu education programs have better attendance rates and better graduation rates. So one way in which music is being used is music therapy. It's basically using all these positive attributes of music to treat, you know, depression, anxiety, agitation, as well as other serious diseases like Alzheimer's. And or it also treats, you know, a long, rough day working on Death Star. But <laughs> <laughs> some of the more serious uses are for Alzheimer's. And so sometimes patients are kind of so deep into the disease that they can't even communicate with the outside world. But when they listen to music, that they used to love, they visibly light up. And that shows how music, even though nothing else can connect to them, music can, it can help them remember. This is a quote I really like by Plato. Music is a moral law. It provides soul to the universe, wings to the mind, flight to the imagination, and charm and gaiety to life and to everything. Music is also a path to self-improvement. I've already told you about the friends and family that I gained at Rock Shop but I also gained experience and confidence. I changed as a person. So let's flash back a couple years to the spring of 2014 when I got an amazing opportunity. It was the chance to compose and do sound design for an iPhone application. <laughs> and frankly, I was a bit scared. I was a sophomore in high school. The lady who had hired me thought I was a sophomore in college. I swear I didn't lie. <laughs> she just mistook me. Um, I had just gotten the job over a few other people, and I was nervous. But then I sat down and I thought about what music had done for me so far and what I had learned. And so I thought about the first time I learned how to play a musical instrument. I was absolutely terrible, but that's you know how you should be when you start out. But through constant practice, I got the discipline and persistence to become the musician I am today. And then I started to try new instruments. Like, I transitioned from the piano to the harp, and I realized the harp is basically a vertical piano, but without the black keys. And so that made everything so much easier for me, applying my piano skill to the harp. And then it came a time that I had to put on live shows and organize them, and I realized 
everything goes wrong last second. You can probably talk to Zoe and Gabby right after this. A ton of things definitely went wrong, but it happens. And I had to learn how to deal with these problems on the fly quickly under pressure. And then, so when I got this job opportunity, I was like, wow, I've actually learned all of these things and I can do this. So I confidently accepted that job offer and it's been one of the best decisions I've done in my life so far. Music connects to our emotions. If we want to feel inspired, excited, if we want to be chilled out or pumped up, music is our gateway. We can calm down, we can cheer ourselves up, we can overcome sadness, calm our anger, all through music. And these are things that we do every day of our life, though we might not realize it. We listen to music to help us focus when we do homework, to energize us while we work out, or to help us calm down before sleeping. And this is how we use music. But other people also use music to affect us. Just like commercials. Commercials, they want you to buy something. They want you to convince you of a point. They want you to vote for them, something like that. And they use music to try to influence your opinion of them. Or movies, movies especially. They utilize music connection to human emotion to try to get you into the film. So I want you to think about a horror movie and the screeching strings that come in every time you think something bad's gonna happen. You know that? But think about it without that. And suspension's gone, it's not scary anymore. It's probably just a couple people walking down a dark hallway, right? Not scary at all. But then let's think about Jaws and the shark's iconic theme. You should all know that. Da dun, da dun, da dun, da dun, da dun. That one. So. <laughs> Throughout the movie, we're conditioned to think that and connect it with the shark. And so every time we hear it, we think, oh, crap, the shark's coming. Someone's going to die this time. Someone's going to get eaten. And we get into it, get on the edge of our seats, and we're watching. And that's exactly what they want us to do. Through music, they connected to us. And they told us the shark was going to come even when it doesn't. All civilizations for thousands of years have used this power of music to connect their communities and solidify them. And so this is just like what I was talking about with Sam and Team Samo earlier. A strong, resilient community utilized the power of music to support one of their own that was in need. But this also happens on a global scale. Like in January of 2010, Haiti experienced a magnitude seven earthquake and the world rallied around them. They put on a benefit concert and raised over $58 million to support those in need. Music connects creates communities, it changes lives. It changes your brain. It's a path to self-importance. It connects to your emotions, and it solidifies the communities around us. Music is so powerful. And now, I just want you to think about that and take advantage of music. Use it to the, most, the best you can. And who knows, maybe you'll want a little more music in your life. Thank you. <laughs>